Margaret was a student at Smith College. She was a senior. She was getting ready to graduate the following week. She was in her room and she had called her dad that morning. Said, oh, I've got a headache. I just, I don't feel good. Her, her girlfriends heard her in her room. Something wasn't right because they were knocking on the door and she wasn't answering and they heard sounds. There were issues with the neurologist about her consciousness. And this doctor was saying he didn't think that she would progress beyond a vegetative state. There was a study uh, looking at people who had traumatic brain injury who were uh, diagnosed as being vegetative, and 41% of them ended up being in the minimally conscious state. And the decision points are very early. Your life is turned upside down in an instant. You know, a week before you graduate in college, something happens and you have to make a choice. I had to make a decision in 24 hours, and he asked me what I, I thought Margaret would want. She had written an essay. She talked in the paper about what she had learned. Euthanizing an animal isn't the first choice, it's the last choice. So I gave this paper to the doctor and I said, if my daughter feels this way about animals, how could I do otherwise than what she would do with a cat or a dog? I think the system tends to prompt premature choices because they've lost consciousness, and this is a very important point. In most medical contexts, the loss of consciousness becomes the trigger that leads surrogates or family members to make choices. That loss of consciousness could be the end. It could be the move towards death or brain death, or it could be the first step towards recovery. I decide that we're going to do everything, and she goes to Spalding Hospital. She has intensive therapy. They allowed her to be part of the study, and we got her to New York. And when we first saw Maggie, she came in for a three-day visit. The first day she was with us, we couldn't identify any bedside evidence that she was consciously aware. The second day, she was more alert. During this time, we saw the first evidence that she could take the command to look down with her left eye and follow it. It was clear and it changed her diagnosis right away. It was like amazing <laughs> because all these other doctors are saying she's in a vegetative state. The answer was there. She definitely could understand. She definitely could respond using her eye movement. And he asked her, can you see your mother? And she said, yes. And it was an amazing moment. I'm Dan Bezier founder and executive director of the Speak Your Mind Foundation. We create personalized and affordable assistive technologies to help people with a variety of neurological conditions and diseases, such as stroke, spinal cord injury, ALS, traumatic brain injury, cerebral palsy, and a variety of other conditions that just limit someone's ability to communicate. Her mom found every brain computer interface available for her, and we've seen progress. But it wasn't until the Speak Your Mind Foundation put together this low-cost, highly accurate camera put on her left eye that we've seen any real change in her. And all of us, everybody on our team was stunned when she was able to take that camera and do 90 downward eye movements in three minutes. So why are we doing this? Why would a group of engineers and developers come together to build technology for people with disabilities? The reason is because they deserve it, because Maggie deserves it, because Nancy deserves it. Maggie has the right to communicate just as much as you or I would. We can put a pair of glasses on Maggie's face that can enable her to interact with the world. Why wouldn't we do that? Dan start to speak your mind. And what's really good about this device, it's portable, it's easy to set up. This she can always use instantly. It's practical, it's simple, it works. This is all it takes. A pair of cheap hipster glasses that we picked up at the store, a webcam from Radio Shack, and creating a piece of software that can use that piece of technology. The alternative on the market today is $15,000. This is $30. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles the other one does. It may not have all the features, but you know what it can do better than that other device? It can help Maggie to communicate, and it can certainly help a lot of other people just like Maggie to communicate as well. Probably what will most address this population are the affordable, accessible, 
interventions of the sort that are being developed by a Speak Your Mind. And I think that's really the only way to go because we're talking about 200,000 people who are potentially going to be helped by this. Right now, Speak Your Mind is at a very exciting time. We've built a series of prototypes like the glasses that you saw Maggie wearing. We've built other types of devices too that can leverage whatever abilities that individual has. But now we need your help. We need to take these prototypes and build more and more technologies and scale them so that we can help more and more people. Put yourself in Maggie's position. Put yourself in her shoes and think about what it would be like to not be able to tell your mom that you love her and just let it settle in just for a minute. Your support is going to enable many, many others like Maggie to communicate effectively, to express their personalities, to control their environment, and to speak their minds. One more time, just give us another yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Wow. All right. <laughs>